Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 185. Hey, if you want to download this workbook and follow along, click on my YouTube channel, then click on my college website link, and you can download the workbook, Excel Magic Trick 185 to 202. In Trick 185, we have a database here, fields, there's a date, a depth, an employee purpose, and cost, and we need to extract the records that are for a particular department. So if we had department one right here, we want to populate this table with only the records from uh, department one. So if we see a three, we don't want to extract that record. Let me look at the uh, finished version here and show you what I mean. If I select department two, I want this table to automatically populate uh, four and it would extract just the records that show department four. Now. If you were in Access and doing a query, this is super easy. Not only that, but it's similarly easy if you use Excel Advanced Filter, which I show you how to do in other videos. You just, uh, it's very simple. Uh, that's for another video. But what if you wanted to do it with formulas, dynamic? Sometimes people like to do that. Well, in this case, it's very hard to do. So, uh, advanced filter, even building a little macro around that advanced filter would be maybe easier. But nevertheless, some people want to do it this way with the formula, so it's completely dynamic. So, let's see how to do that. First, though, we want to name. I want to name this whole column here date, this whole column here department, etc. Because it will help us greatly simplify our formula creation. I'm going to highlight this whole table, and because I have spaces all the way around it like that, or it could be that a row was touching, I can use the keyboard shortcut to highlight the whole table. Otherwise, you'd have to do it with your cursor, right? The keyboard shortcut is Control Asterisk, and I use the asterisk on the number pad when it highlights it. Now, the, the, uh, to name all of these columns, the name that sits at the top of the column, you go to formulas, define names, create from selection. In 2003, you go to insert names, create from selection, but I never do it that way. I do it with a keyboard shortcut, Control Shift F3. And it asks you, where are the names? Definitely uncheck that one because we don't want to name each row a date. We want to name just uh, the columns from the top row. We can check it by using our name box. Sure enough, it got the cost. Sure enough, it got the uh, date. There you go. Now let's go over and create our formulas. All right, right here we need to count first. We need to count how many departments, no matter what we put here. All right, so you ready? Equals count if. And oh, we we already named that range, right? And since it's the department, we'll use our department. You can either type it in like that. If you forget it, you can use the keyboard shortcut F3, and there's a name, a list of them. Or you can go to Formulas, Define Name, Use in Formula. Similar in 2003, you go to Insert, and then Names. All right, I'm going to hit F3, and then double click uh, Depth. Now, uh, that's that F3 method is for when you forget. If you know how to spell it, it's usually faster to just type it out. All right, the criteria is right here. Now we use a cell reference, that way control enter when we use our drop down here, it'll properly tell us. Now we'll use this number here, since we have a huge column here the same size as that table over there, we'll use uh, this number to turn on and off the records in an if uh, statement. So let's start our formula, equals if, and then we'll do rows, and rows what? We want J16, J dollar sign 16 colon 16 close parentheses this is a clever way to get the numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 as you copy a formula down notice right now the rows is asking how many rows are there well j16 to j16 there's just one row 16 but when you copy this formula down that one's locked on 16 and this one's free to move to 17 so it's an expandable range. So when it's down here, the question will be rows 16 to 17, how many are there? There's two rows. And we'll ask of the rows, is that greater than or equal, less than or equal to our count? Now the count has to be locked in all directions, so I'll hit the F4. That way when it gets past 48, uh, in the false part, we'll put blank. And so a blank will show up here. Comma. Now the true. The true, we're going to use index, because index can look up a column. And what we really want to uh, look up is uh, each one of the date, 
department, employee, purpose, and cost. And if that record is a department, that'll be a true, and it will, we will extract it. So what are we going to do? Well, look at this. If we didn't um, name that and use the indirect function, which we're going to do, we'd have to, well, let's do index first. And then this array is what I'm talking about. For each one of these columns, we'd have to go and highlight the column over in the original table. For example, if we were doing the date column, we have to highlight. Then the depth, we have to highlight. So, whoa, that's terrible. We'd have to create one, two, three, four, five, five different formulas. Luckily, we can use the indirect function and just ask it to look at the field name. And I'm going to say this. Now, this needs to be locked going down, so F4, F4 dollar sign in front of the row reference, but not the column. That way, when this formula moves over to the depth column here for our extract area, it will be looking at the name depth and deliver the depth column to our formula. Close parentheses. If you don't believe it, you could see right now how the indirect works. Just highlight it and hit the F9 key. There's all of our serial numbers which underlie our dates. Control Z. All right, so we've taken care of our array. Now, comma. Now, here's the hard part, right? Because we need row numbers. Now, let's just go look over here. Right now, our we're asking for department 2. So right now, well, there's not a 2 until it gets down. Oh, there it is right there. So we need whatever row this number is in our data set. Oh, and then we need this one. Notice they're not right next to each other. Right? That really is a problem. If we sorted it, it would be a little bit easier. But um, a lot of times with tables like this, you want to just be able to enter records and not always have to sort. So we are in our data set. Let's go ahead and construct this. We're going to use small. And uh, in the K, see that K right there? We'll do the array. And then the K will be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 48. So it'll know to get those 48 records. Now the array is going to be if. And what's our test? Remember, we're, we're extracting based on the depth field for department 2. So we'll say depth, and I'm going to type it in, equals this department 2. Now that has to be locked in all directions, because that criteria is going to be used for every single one of these columns. So this will deliver what? A bunch of trues and falses only when the record equals de uh, department 2. Now, comma. Here's our screen tip. What's the value if true? Well, we want a row number, don't we, right? Because we're delivering a row number to the index for this particular range. Well, we'll simply do row. And we can do the same row every single time. So we can do depth. But look at this. Right now, these trues and falses would deliver what? Let's go over and look. Let's find the first two here, the first two. There it is right there at 42. That's not what we want. So really, that we got to do one other additional thing here. We have to subtract row, the first one in the column. Notice there's the range, so it's that one. And then I'm going to hit F4 to lock it. Notice what this do has done. It would be 42 minus 13, which would give us exactly the row that that first true sits in. But wait a second. What if we had? Uh, the first one was 2. It would be row 13 minus row 13. Well, that won't work, so we have to add 1. Now, we can close parentheses on the if, because we don't need the false. Notice the screen tip comes up and says, what's the k? That's going to be our uh, this right here. Now, think say that is this um, r right here, these rows will give us, uh, for example, uh, 31 and then 35, right? So 31 is smaller than 35. So when this says 1, it'll pick up the 31 because it's the one smallest. When it's 35, when it gets down to the next row, it'll pick up the second smallest, which is 35. So that's our K, close parentheses. We get our index, but we have our row number, so we close that off. And finally, we have our if. And what we want in the cell, if the first part is false, is comma, double quote, double quote for blank. Close parentheses. Now this is an array, so control shift and enter. And let's drag it over and then drag it down. I can already see the cost column is not formatted correctly. I'm going to click in the bottom and control up arrow. I'm going to click here and control shift down arrow. And I'm going to use the keyboard shortcut for currency, control shift 4. All right, so that looks like it worked. And we can test it, change it to department uh, 6. 
Sure enough, there's only six records. Department five. There, oh, there's only one. Department four. And then there's a bunch. So that's how to do uh, this extract uh, records based on one field and a criteria using a formula. See you next trick.